Los Angeles, California, a city known for two things, bad traffic and the movies, baby, good old Hollywood. You'd think the best place to make movies is also the best place to watch them, right? That, that's a logical conclusion. So this is me going to five of the best theaters in Los Angeles to find out which is the best one. An experience that led to way too much popcorn, a bunch of over-the-top theaters, and even a celebrity sighting. That's right, your boy saw some, some actors, some celebrities. Also, the theaters span different price points, so please, like, do all the stuff, the likes and all the stuff for the video. I'm gonna lose a lot of money, but I try not to think about it. The first theater we went to was the Alamo Draft House, a smaller chain theater with only 23 theaters so far in the United States. Founded in 1997 by Tim League, the Alamo Draft House focuses very much on the customer experience. Very strict, no phones policy, no talking. So if you're worried, if you're scared, you got little kids kicking your seat, if that's your nightmares, that ain't gonna fly here. One of the big things here is that this is a dine-in theater, meaning you order food and they bring it up to you up to 30 minutes before the end of the movie. Whenever I think of like a movie theater selling real food outside of popcorns and stuff like that, candy, I, I just think they're gonna throw in some Lunchables into the microwave or that little penguin dude, whatever the hell his brand's called. But this food, I gotta admit, I gotta admit, it's pretty good. I brought my brother Randy because he's kind of like the food guy and it even got the seal of approval from him. Good job, Alamo Draft House. Takes a lot to impress that guy. We both got pizzas and it wasn't like amazing, authentic pizza, but it was, it was good. I enjoyed it. As far as movie theater pizzas go, it's like the freaking Babe Ruth, the Muhammad Ali of movie theater pizzas. The pretzel though, dude, I got this pretzel and they had this like jalapeno cheese, man. Oh. Baby, I could've eaten like a hundred of them. King was crazy. I know what you're thinking. Uh, they can't care that much about talking in the theater if you're ordering food. Hey, waitress, bring me a large pie, right? That's not gonna fly in the movie. Guess again, guess again they thought about that. Once the movie starts, they tell you to write your orders down on these little slips of paper that they have, like a little desk, a little swing out cubicle for you. You write your order down, bring me a bring me a large pizza pie. But then the waiter comes and grabs it like some thief in the night, grabs your order, runs away, gets you your food. The lady we had was even doing this Metal Gear solid like crab stealth walk because she was trying to get under the screen she was she was moving like that she was so focused on not getting in the way of the screen we saw the return of the jedi 40th anniversary show and they even had this fun pre-show of old ads old star wars commercials that they played before the movie the theater itself was kind of small especially compared to some of the other ones on this list but it was a decent size although i must say the lobby and all the hallways and stuff like that stunning stunning it was clean, it had tons of these cool posters from both old movies, new movies, you name it. And then they had these display cases with a bunch of random figures. It was it was just super cool. And they even have this own home video rental style, like it's Blockbuster or something. You take them back for free, for free. You bring them back, here, I, I borrowed Goonies. Thanks, Alamo Draft House. thanks for the copy. One thing I'll say though, is that it is a little pricey, especially if you get food and like that's kind of the experience. The ticket was 15, the pizza was 17, the pretzel 10, and when you include the worst part about LA, the parking, that's like another 30 bucks. That came out to $72. What the heck, this was supposed to be one of the cheaper ones. Still a great theater and it's affordable too. If you don't get the food, we also got a lot of food, so like that too. But if you want the full experience, you're, you're Bring the wallet, okay? Bring the wallet. Smash that piggy bank, do all that stuff. Next up, I headed to the New Beverly Cinema, which is famously owned by Quentin Tarantino, who also is the lead programmer at the theater. The theater actually started out as an adult one where they played naughty films, but it was changed to a non-naughty movie theater in 1978 by Sherman Torgan. Tarantino would eventually take ownership after Torgan's death and decided to make the theater a safe haven of 35 millimeter prints. Most theaters only show digital, but not the new Beverly. They only show 35 millimeter, which makes it more authentic, makes it look better. A great experience. Along with exclusively showing film prints, the theater immerses you in its classic Hollywood time period. My favorite of which, the snacks are damn cheap. Like 99 cent store cheap, but like really good still. The average medium popcorn, okay, for a movie theater in the US, Eight bucks, eight buckaroons. But at the New Beverly, it's only three dollars, with the small and large only being a dollar extra down or up, whatever way you go. Candy ranges from a dollar fifty 
to 250. A large drink? Guess what? 250. 250, it's like the 70s again. You can get a ton of stuff here and it's really affordable. They also got some pretty cool shirts that alternate throughout the year. And when I was there, I got this Cliff Booth Stuntman shirt referencing Brad Pitt's character from Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. This is actually the only theater on this list I've been to before making this video. And going back, I had just as much fun. I saw a double feature of Bound slash Set It Off, which only cost $14 for both films. And when you add the medium popcorn and drink, that comes out to 18 bucks. That's crazy. That's like a regular IMAX ticket. Every month they have a special midnight screening every Friday of one of Tarantino's own personal prints of his movie. It's like you wander into his living room and you say, hey, what's up, QT? Uh, I'm, I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna go watch that real quick. His own personal cut. If you're going to go to the New Beverly and can stay up late enough for it, I think a midnight screening is the way to go. I saw Once Upon a Time in Hollywood a few months back and it was, it was terrific, it was great. They played a bunch of old trailers to help set the time period, seeing ads for Sharon Tate movies, Rick Dalton ones, and even an ad for the Red Apple Cigarettes brand that's always running throughout his films. The screen isn't massive, but with only one theater in the place, it has a very personal and intimate feel. Like every screening matters, and the employees do a great job of making it feel like that. It's the cheapest on my list today, and if you want a high quality theater experience in Los Angeles, but it's still affordable, this is the one, this is the one. Next up, I went to AMC City Walk, which is connected to Universal Studios Hollywood, fun fact. Just an AMC? Jay, why'd you go to some regular theater? What's up with that? Listen here, pal, I know you're new here. This ain't no regular AMC, let me tell you about it. IMAX is like the big dog when it comes to movie quality, right? You've all heard about it. I've heard about it, you've heard of it, we've all heard about it. But what if I told you there was something better than IMAX? That's right, it's IMAX. But with lasers. I'm not really a camera guy, don't tell anyone. But let me try to explain what this video I watched on it did. So fun fact, right? Regular projectors often hardly ever show the color black. It's usually just really, really dark gray. But laser IMAX projections, they can show the full range of contrast. They can do full black. They can do that real space midnight black, which makes for a better contrast in colors and therefore sharper image quality. There are only 289 IMAX laser theaters. Oh, you mean like in the US, right? Or just in California? No, in the world, in the whole freaking world, 289. That's like less than theme parks. So of course I had to see something pretty cool, right? So I decided to see one of the best looking films I've ever seen across the Spider-Verse. So I hear you asking it, right? How did it look? How did it look? Did it change my perception of reality, my smells, my senses, all that stuff? Kinda. Here's the thing. It looks damn good, okay? And maybe the difference was really easy for me because I saw Across the Spider-Verse already in a normal theater. It stood out to me more. But if you don't go to the movies a lot and you just sit down, you might not notice it. Aside from that, the theater was also really nice. It had a lot of open space, areas to lounge, a bar, a VIP area, and a lot of those big displays I always think are really cool. One of the best parts though was that they had costumes and props from a bunch of different movies. New ones like Fast X and older ones like Scarface and Schindler's List. The snack selection was kind of standard and the popcorn was good, but it's movie theater popcorn, it's always good. The whole surrounding area though of CityWalk is really cool. They had a really cool collectible store I checked out and I thought, oh, this spider punk little figure, he looks sick, he looks so cool. 40 bucks, I'm all right. That's more expensive than my ticket. They got a massive chocolate factory and more importantly, a Wetzel's pretzels. And, and, and let me tell you, let me tell you about Wetzel's Dude, it was crazy, it was so good. The cool thing about the theater is that it is attached to the theme park as well. So if you go see the movie, you come go, go to some of these cool stores, right? Get a Wetzel's pretzel and then go see an IMAX laser theater. That's a great way to spend a day. The ticket was $17, the popcorn was seven, and the parking was 30, which brings it up to about 53. And I'm putting an asterisk on that price because if you go to the theme park, it makes the parking a lot more worth it. After this, I went to arguably the most iconic theater in Los Angeles, the TCL Chinese Theater. Opening in 1927, this theater is almost a hundred years old. Damn, that's... That's old. The theater has been in a ton of movies and shows, most recently being one of Drax and Mantis's stops in the Guardians of the Galaxy Christmas special. They have tons of premieres here, special events, and easily this is one of the most iconic 
historic landmarks in the city. Going inside the theater, you can definitely feel its age. Not in a bad way, like it's all dusty and falling apart like that. It just feels historical, you know, almost like entering into an old church. Despite its age, it has state-of-the-art technology, and while the IMAX theater didn't surpass Universal's laser one, it was still incredible. Looking around, there was some really cool architecture and statues, this massive ceiling, and just in general, the theming around the place was awesome. I saw Transformers Rise of the Beast here, and one of the downsides, I say, is that it is a little bit on the expensive side. My ticket was $25 for just regular IMAX, and when combined with that $7 Slurpee I got, that's a good $32 meaning I only paid $3, bringing my grand total to $35, which is the second cheapest theater I went to. The snack selection is very minimal though, very standard popcorn candy, soda stuff like that, nothing impressive. Outside the theater itself though, there is a lot to look at. They have all these cool costumes in the lobby, spanning multiple genres and decades of film. Of course, you have all the, the handprints and the footmarks of the celebrities, and you could just do that for like an hour, to be honest. They provide tours of the place, which I didn't do this time, but it sounds incredibly interesting, and I'd love to go back at some point in the future to do that. If you're into history, this might be the one. It's beautiful, it's cool, the atmosphere is incredibly unique, and the quality of the film was pretty good too. The last theater I went to was by far the most expensive ticket, costing a total of $52. Per ticket, can I afford that? I can't, I don't think I can. This is of course the El Capitan, located directly across the street from the Chinese theater. The thing with this theater is that it's still owned by Disney and really only shows Disney films. They have regular price tickets too, but I went to a special fan event thing, the one that cost $52, and it was, it was an experience, man. First off, they theme the whole theater just for the one movie they're showing, and they go so over the top to make it an experience. Not just the movie itself, waiting for the movie, leaving the movie, it's crazy. I saw Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 opening night here, and it was definitely, definitely worth it. It was a great choice. Walking in, they were playing music from the movies, they had photo ops, props from the film, and gave us quite a bit of free stuff included in the ticket. I got some popcorn and a Guardian's tin, this little fancy lanyard, I thought it was pretty cool. I got to pick a drink, and then they gave us a mystery Funko Pop from the movie. I got my boy Rocket, and the person I was with got Star-Lord, and there's a ton of variety. I saw people getting Groot, Mantis, Drax, you name it. The theater itself was gorgeous. They had these projections on the wall to make it look more like Guardians. They had this big fancy light up sign, costumes from the movie, and a guy from Nerdist doing trivia giving away a signed poster by the whole cast. The trivia was way too hard though, I, I never stood a chance. When it finally came to show the movie, the guy from Nerdist was like, guess what nerds, you haven't seen anything yet. Sean Gunn, Maria Bakalova, come out here, tell these nerds what's up. They answered a few questions and then they said, get hyped, and then we watched the movie. But first, they put on a little light show. When the movie was over, they gave us a poster and lured us into the basement to see even more costumes from the movie. The experience itself was absurd, but I got a tiny little gripe with it. Just, just, a, just a tiny little gripe, just, just a little thing. The screen was a little on the smaller side, almost like not really a dedicated screen, but it felt like they were having movie night in a big Broadway theater. I paid $3 for parking. Again, they had the same thing. So I only paid $55 per ticket, which when you think about it, $15 ticket, $15 Funko Pop, $10 large popcorn, $6 drink, $6 poster, $5 tin. It's like you're making money. Plus seeing all the props and costumes, the value is insanely worth it. I know spending $55 on one ticket sounds like a lot, but with all the snacks and things like that, you're gonna be spending more anyways. The cool thing about this theater is every fan event is different too. They customize it to better show the film. My brother Reggie says it snows for Nightmare Before Christmas every year. What the hell? Going to all these theaters sure was expensive, so I'd like to thank today's sponsor. No one. There is no sponsor. I want to do more videos like this, so like it, subscribe, all that stuff so I can do more. I have a few in mind, but I just need these videos to do good so I can justify it so that my family and everyone like that doesn't call me crazy. Thanks for watching. What theater do you think is the best? What cool things do theaters in your city have? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.